spring of 1961, I followed and photographed Otis Terrell Overland in a region of forests and swamps, tall cypress and muddy riverbanks. The rivers had beautiful names, Bogachita, Tangipahoa, Bogafalaya, Tallahalee. To strangers, it was an empty, wild place. To Otis, it was his world, his life. Otis was a turtle hunter, a wilderness man, and someone I have never ceased to admire. I built a house with a friend. We hauled two truckloads of peaches from Georgia to the New York market at Hunts Point. The fruit was too ripe for regular shippers, so we bought it cheap, and we drove nonstop up there and back. We got enough money to build the house and bring in electricity for the kids' TV and Alice's kitchen. The next thing I want to do is build an inside bathroom. Yeah, I always liked the sound of a jukebox. I saw a notice in the paper about they was auctioning off some jukeboxes, and I got this one. It's nice to walk around the woods and hear the music coming from the house. I've always wanted to live as much like my folks did as I could. My people are Oglethorpe Georgians, our mother says. They came to Georgia in the 1700s when James Oglethorpe started the colony. They were hunters and woodsmen. They liked the wilderness and they put food on the table with their own hands, hunting, trapping, and selling furs. In those days, you couldn't go north. Over the mountains, there were hostile Indians and south were the Spanish. So over the years, they just moved west till they came here to Mississippi. Now we've been here a long time. When I got started hunting turtles, there wasn't no one around here doing that. Folks didn't even know such a creature lived here. My cousin Preacher got me started. He talked about how it was something they did down in Louisiana. He remembered his father hunting turtles. He watched him do it, but he didn't do it himself. Preacher couldn't do it himself. He had a bad heart, but he could tell me what he remembered about how it was done, especially how to make that three-pronged gaff and how really sharp it had to be. I couldn't live the way most folks live around here. I just want to live the way my daddy and granddaddy and his daddy did. I don't expect a lot, but I want to live as a natural man, barefoot and in the country. I can't stand shoes, and I don't know how folks live in the city. I never picked turtle gapping as something special I really wanted to do. It sort of came natural, and it is exciting, and I enjoyed to do it, because I do it better than anyone else, at least so far. Lewis and Buddy and all of them that tried it don't seem to have the feel. Sometimes they get them on the hook, but they can't seem to keep them on and get them into the boat. I love being out in the woods and out on the river fishing or hunting or just looking. I'll mark where the wild turkeys hang out or the deer bed down. Sometimes I'll find a big berry patch or wild persimmon tree and Alice will make a batch of jam. Turtle hunting is how I earn my living. I don't worry too much about other people catching them. They don't seem to have the knack. I guess the big ones can't last forever, but I think they'll be around longer than I will. Two things I had to learn really well, the ways of the river and how these big snappers lived and hunted in them. 
They like the long, still reaches of the river without too much change in the current. But these rivers never stay the same. They're always rising or falling. Banks cave in, fallen trees block the way, channels change, bushes get torn loose and pile up. There's always new problems every time you hunt a stretch of it. You can only hunt going downstream because the current runs too fast to get back up. We worked it out so a preacher would drop me off upstream and then he'd meet me somewhere four or five miles down below. If the water's too low, you can't get through. If it's too high, it runs too fast to hunt. Then when you get to these long, still stretches, you've got to read the water itself. You have to watch for the bubbles that tell you where they are. Some places along the river, I set out trot lines. Just a big hook and a line tied to a bush with a chunk of fish for bait. I catch smaller turtles that way. Folks down in the market in New Orleans will take all of them I can get. The big one, though, you got to use the gaff hook. They'll tear that trot line all up, and they'll bite right through the shank of a hook. They got so much muscle in their jaws, they'll bite right through a pine board. Take your toe, too, if you let them. There was one stretch of the Tallahaley that ran by a flat grassy bank with big shady trees growing there. I swear it looked just like a park. Every time I'd go through there looking for turtles, I'd see turkeys scratching in the grass and feeding. Sometimes a lot, sometimes a few. Turkeys are real smart birds. They spook real easy. I'd drift down that stretch, quiet, minding my own business, and I guess they got used to me. So I took my shotgun with me when turkey season opened. And when I reached that spot, I stood up and drifted on by till I got just to the right place and then blam, blam, 
We had us a couple of real nice turkeys that fall. I never hunted anything for the market except turtles. Most of the time it was just to put food on the table. When turtles move around, they disturb old leaves and stuff on the river bottom and release a line of bubbles behind them as they move. You have to gauge these bubbles to guess where that fella is. Turtles breathe air and they release air bubbles from time to time as they lay still on the bottom. That's a different looking kind of bubble, bigger, more round, and you go straight into them with your gaff hook when you see them. There's a lot more to it than that, but that's where you start. And they all got their own little habits though. Laughing a turtle takes a real touch. You gotta feel that guy right down the pole. If you feel something push back on your pole, you gotta guess which part of the turtle you're touching. The only part of a turtle's tough hide that hook and snag and hold on is the fleshy folds between the neck and the shoulder. If you miss that, he usually gets away. You get him in the rear and he'll tear loose every time. In the shoulder, he'll push into it instead of pulling away.
Getting together every once in a while and visiting is something folks here like to do. Cousins, aunts, uncles, friends, just visiting and talking of this and that. Kids playing in the yard. And if you want a big enough pile of food to feed them all, frog legs are the easiest to get and what they all like to eat. There's more frogs around here than anything else. You fill up a sack in no time. It's sweet, white meat, better than chicken. I like being near my family, best of all. I guess I'm not entirely happy unless I'm with Alice and the kids. When I'm away hauling peaches or something, they're always on my mind. I don't hardly ever spend a night away from home. I remember one time when we were kids, we had a frog roast at Grandpa's house. Grandpa lived alone, and me and Buddy stayed over. Later that night, we got really thirsty, and there wasn't a drop of water in the house. Grandpa was asleep in the rocking chair, snoring like a runaway locomotive. We couldn't wake him up. It was really dark outside. We wanted to go out to the well for water, but there was owls hooting and all kinds of scary sounds. Buddy saw a little bottle of powdered quinine on the mantel, and Grandpa was sleeping with his head back and his mouth wide open. We figured the bitter taste would surely wake him, so we sprinkled a good bit on his tongue and hoped he'd wake up and go to the well with us. He began snorting and smacking his lips and coughing and sputtering. Pretty soon he woke up and looked around till he saw us. Boys, I think I done busted my gallbladder, he said, and went right back to sleep.
as I watch Otis and Preacher going to market that long ago day, I think of the changes our world has seen. Throughout its historic range, the alligator snapping turtle is now protected. To me, as to most of us in the 60s, nature seemed boundless and the adventuresome and enterprising individuals who reaped its bounty were admirable. They lived in the wilderness as their forefathers had, free and independent. Sadly, population growth and environmental devastation have become big facts of life and Mother Nature needs our love and consideration now more than ever. <laughs>